the ones who actually are the ones that were freed from Egypt. We participate. Those of you not Jewish, you've been grafted in, so guess what? You were freed in Egypt as well. You know, so it is our duty in every generation to tell this story. One, to tell of God's grace, God's love, and of God's promise. Because the Jews were just as sinful as the Egyptians. The Jews didn't deserve any other special treatment. There was a reason that they were in slavery. There's a reason that they had gone through everything they'd gone through for the last 400 years. There's a reason those 3 million people had suffered so much. But God decided in His grace to not kill them on that night. God decided to leave their sins taken care of at another time. So no, the night that God went through Egypt and killed the firstborn is the same night in history, centuries later, 1300 years later, that same night in history when Jesus was killed on the cross when the firstborn of God was also killed for the sins that were left unpunished. It's three days later when he rises from the grave is the same day of the parting of the Red Sea. Centuries later. I don't think that's by accident. I think God was driving a particular message home as he washed Israel's enemies away in the sea. He washes our sins away when we come to him. We have a great opportunity to celebrate and honor that freedom that we have. We have a great opportunity to see how, how two stories come together and become one. When Moses came down with the, ta with the tablets originally and they were worshiping the idol, he destroyed the templates. And Aaron and the priest went through and killed 3,000 that day. That day of Pentecost. Shavuot, as it's known in Hebrew. Those of us that are Christians know day of Pentecost is something else. A day in the book of Acts when 3,000 were baptized on that same day.